Well, today we're wading into some uh, some pretty murky waters. Yeah. The kind that make you really wonder, you know, about the cracks that form in institutions that you think are unshakable. Right. We're talking about church leaders and the, uh, the shock waves that happen when they fall from grace. Yeah, it's a tough topic. We've got two very different scenarios in front of us today. Okay. Um, one is the the drama that's still unfolding at Gateway Church. Right. That's a Texas mega church. Mm-hmm. And then we've got this case of Pastor Steve Lawson. Right. Uh, now, I know just even reading the headlines about this stuff, it feels it feels kind of icky like you're rubbernecking at an accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we have to keep in mind that these stories involve real people. Absolutely. Real families, real consequences. It's crucial to remember that, Mm -hmm. that it's so easy to get caught up in the scandal. Right. But the human cost is very real. Absolutely. So let's unpack Gateway Church first. Um, Things really imploded there starting back in June of 2024. Yeah. With the resignation of the founding pastor, Robert Morris. Right. And that came after Cindy Clemisher accused him of sexual abuse from her childhood back in the 80s. Right. And unfortunately, that's how these situations often begin. You have a very (laughs) high profile leader who's accused of something and then it just sets off this whole domino effect. Yeah. And the dominoes really fell at Gateway. Yeah. I mean, founding elder Steve Dublin was out soon after accused of financial abuse, bullying, and then even Robert Morris's own son, James, who briefly took over. He stepped down, too. Wow. It's like you almost couldn't even make this stuff up. Oh, no. it's It really highlights how quickly these events can kind of snowball. Yeah. And it just suggests that there's deeper systemic issues within the church's leadership. Well, and it didn't stop. It kept going. In August of 2024, they fired executive pastor Kim Tall Glasgow. Mm-hmm. They cited a moral issue. Okay. But they wouldn't elaborate. It's giving very much like, just trust us, we know best Hmm. kind of vibes. Yeah. It's a classic example of an organization that's trying to manage public image. Yeah. You know, they use a term like moral issue because it's deliberately vague. Right. That allows them to kind of control the narrative a little bit. Totally. But it prevents them from having to get into specifics. Right. Which could bring about legal repercussions. Especially because Gateway Elder Trey Wilbanks, Mm -hmm. he was quoted saying that this moral issue disqualified Glasgow from serving. Like, what does that even mean? I know, right? It's the million dollar question. Yeah. This lack of transparency just breeds suspicion and distrust, especially since Lawrence Swicegood, who is their executive director, he insists that this situation with Glasgow is totally unrelated to the Morris situation, right? but still won't elaborate on what this moral failure actually is. It's like they're trying to put out a wildfire. Yeah. With, you know, a garden hose. Right. It's not. Yeah. Even if it is unrelated. Right. The timing is just so bad. Of course. It makes it really difficult for anyone to believe it. Absolutely. And that's often the issue when organizations use this damage control tactic. Yep. They're prioritizing protecting the image of the organization over addressing whatever the underlying problems or concerns actually are. Yeah. So we've got this very public, very messy situation at Gateway. And then we have this case of Steve Lawson. Right. Which feels like a totally different thing. It is in a way because the accusations against Lawson are a lot more broad. Okay. It's not about specific allegations. It's just accusations of spiritual infidelities. Right. And from what I understand from these sources, some of his followers are the ones making these accusations. Right. So help me out here. Okay. What does that even mean? What is spiritual infidelity? Is that just like a more, a more I don't know, yeah. religious way of saying moral failure? Or is there a real distinction? I mean, that's the heart of it, isn't it? It's about how different faith communities define wrongdoing and then how they address it. Yeah. And maybe even more important, how much wiggle room they allow in those definitions. You hit on a really important point there. Okay. Because spiritual infidelity, it's a much more vague term than, say, financial abuse. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. It's open to a lot of different interpretations. Right. Which makes it really difficult to pin down what actually happened. Yeah. And then even if you figure that out, how do you hold someone accountable? Right. It's like the difference between saying someone has a bad aura. Right. Versus saying, you know, they embezzled a bunch of money. Exactly. One, One subjective. Yeah and nearly impossible to prove. Yeah. The other is a concrete transgression. 
right? And that difference is really important here because without more specific allegations against Lawson, right? it's hard to even know where to start. Like, are we talking about an affair? Are we talking about abuse of power? Are we talking about heresy? Right. It's really murky. It's all very unclear. Yeah. And that vagueness brings up some serious concerns about how transparent they're being right and if anyone's going to be held accountable well it makes you wonder are the people the folks who are using this phrase spiritual infidelity are they trying to be deliberately unclear right or are they struggling to like really put their finger on what actually happened yeah it's a good question yeah something to consider but i think what's clear is that vagueness just creates a breeding ground for more suspicion Totally. Yeah. And it, it strikes me that both of these situations, even with a lack of clarity around Lawson, mm -hmm. it might point to potential sexual misconduct by both of these leaders. Yeah. It seems to be kind of the underlying implication. But you know, we have to emphasize right. that without having concrete information, we can't jump to any conclusions. No, we're not. We're not saying that it is. We're yeah. just saying that this is. This is what it seems like. It's speculation, responsible speculation, I hope. Responsible speculation. But it is speculation. It's tough because we're just trying to connect the dots with the information we have. Yeah. Which is an important skill these days. It is. Because we are just flooded with information all the time, yeah. and oftentimes it's incomplete or it conflicts with other information we have. That's so being able to look at something that's ambiguous and get something out of it right. is really essential. Absolutely. I agree 100%. So, okay, let's zoom out for a second. Okay. Both of these situations, as different as they seem, they do have a common thread. Yeah. These are leaders, spiritual leaders. In positions of authority with right. serious accusations against them. Exactly. And we have to remember this isn't an isolated incident. Right. This isn't just about one denomination yeah. or some kind of theological camp. Gateways ties to the new apostolic reformation. Right. Exactly. Those are well documented. But then you have Lawson. Right. And it kind of suggests this is a much broader issue. Well, it makes you think about the power dynamics. Exactly. That are at play within religious institutions, the weight of expectations that are on these leaders' shoulders, the human potential for those expectations to be shattered. It's a side of things that we often just don't talk about. We don't talk about it. But scandals like this really force us to confront some of these uncomfortable realities. Because when a leader falls, it's not just about them. No. It impacts the entire community. Absolutely. I can only imagine how disorienting that must be for people who viewed these figures as moral compasses. Oh, it's incredibly disorienting. Yeah. Because it's a betrayal of trust yeah. on just a fundamental level. And for some, it can really shake their faith yeah. to its core. Yeah. They start questioning everything. Everything they thought they knew. The teachings, the community, everything. It's like you're on a ship and you think everything's going fine. And then you realize that the captain has been steering you towards an iceberg this entire time. It can be incredibly disillusioning. Yeah. And then you have this ripple effect, you know, these events. They can really fracture a community. Of course. It just sows these seeds of doubt. There's division, there's fear, there's suspicion. And then people are afraid to speak out because of that. It's like the foundation is crumbling beneath their feet. Yeah. And they don't know what to hold on to. Right. And then you have to think about what happens after that. Right. How do you even begin to rebuild trust? Exactly. It's a really long and hard process. I bet. It takes acknowledging the harm. It takes holding people accountable and then committing to making systemic change right. to prevent this from happening again. Which then begs the question, how do churches do that? Yeah. How do they balance this need for transparency, this need for accountability, while also protecting the people who are involved? It's a tightrope walk. Yeah. Because you have to create a safe space for the victim so they feel comfortable coming forward. Right. You have to make sure that due process is respected, but then you also have to be open with the community about what steps are being taken. It's a lot. It's a lot. And you have to remember that accountability yep. isn't just about addressing the individual. Oh, interesting. It's about examining the system as a whole okay. that allowed that behavior to happen to begin with. So this isn't just about getting rid of a few bad apples. Exactly. We need to look at the orchard where they came from. Precisely, because a lot of times there are underlying factors. Hmm. Power structures, cultures where people don't speak up, unchecked hmm. authority, all these things. Right. They create this environment where this behavior can grow. So is it even possible? I mean, this is what I'm wondering. Yeah. Can an institution that is built on this, this foundation of morality, 
can it move past these scandals without some serious soul searching right and change can they get back that moral authority that's the million dollar question i think so and it requires asking some difficult questions like what were there warning signs that were ignored okay was there a culture of silence that prevented people from speaking up right and if your identity is built on being you know holier than thou exactly it's tempting to sweep this under the rug yeah but that just makes it worse. It perpetuates the problem. It does. And that's why I think these situations yeah. should really make us think about power. Yeah. About accountability. Sure. About how important it is to create ethical cultures in any organization. Right. Not just religious ones. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else is saying. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, you know, want answers right away. Yeah. Yeah. These things are so complicated. They are. They really are. And there's rarely a simple answer. It's a process. Yeah. And it can be a really painful one. Yeah. Because you have to come to terms with a lot of things that are unclear. Right. And you have to accept that sometimes there are multiple truths. Yeah. And you have to understand that it takes time mm -hmm. to heal, to find restoration. It reminds me of that quote. I don't know if you've ever heard this one. The truth will set you free, but first it'll make you miserable. Yeah. And these situations are like that. They're messy. They're painful. It's true. And they often reveal things about us yeah. that are hard to look at. Like what? About human nature, you know? Hmm. Our ability to do good, but then also to do bad things. Right. It reminds us that even people we put on pedestals, people we look up to, yeah. they're just human. Right. They make mistakes too. It's like when you're a kid, you think your parents are superheroes. Right. And then you get old enough to realize they're just... They're just people. They're just trying to figure it out like the rest of us. And I think that's maybe the biggest takeaway from all of this. What's that? Don't become so cynical that you lose faith in people. But also, don't be naive. Right. You know? Have some compassion. Yeah. So basically, just remember, we're all in this together. Exactly. Good ones, bad ones, everything. All the flaws, all the good parts, everything. And I feel like we don't always extend a lot of grace to each other. We don't. Especially not these days. No, we need more of that. We do. We need to hold each other accountable, but do it with kindness. Yeah, assume the best. Yeah, and realize that, you know, we all mess up. Yeah. And when we do, it's an opportunity to learn and to grow. Not a reason to jump down each other's throats. Exactly. Man, okay, this is this has been a lot. It has. But also really helpful to unpack some of this stuff. So for our listeners out there yeah. who, who are maybe going through something similar, maybe not in their church, but in their own communities, with their families, whatever. Absolutely. How do they even begin to sort through all these emotions and figure out what they should do next? You know, it's different for everyone. Yeah. There's no right answer. Yeah. But I would say find people you can trust. Okay. Friends, family, a therapist, a, a mentor, yeah. someone you can talk to, process these emotions, right. grieve what was lost, yeah. and then start to figure out what your path forward looks like. And it's okay to ask tough questions. Absolutely. It's yeah. okay to challenge the narrative. It really is because this is about more than just other people's mistakes. What do you mean? It's about you. Okay. It's about what you value, where you draw the line deep i like it yeah well i think we've given our listeners a lot to think about today i think so too yeah this has been a heavy one but we do these deep dives every week we do we cover all kinds of topics all the time and we really appreciate you joining us so until next time see you next time
my strength Feel the pace We'll never fall Strength.